Gupta from BSc Life Sciences, Hansraj College, University of Delhi. Today, we will be discussing about the topic Phylum Nidaria. Earlier, Phylum Nidaria was called Phylum Cylindrata because of their simple body organization around a central body cavity which is called Cylindron. But now it is referred to as Phylum Nidaria. Why it is called phylum nidaria? The word nidaria, it is derived from the Greek word nidos, which means nettle. Nettle, what is nettle? A herbaceous plant which is covered with stings. So actually the members of phylum nidaria, they have stinging cells called nidocytes. Actually, there are two types of cells. Nidoblasts, which are the immature cells. They are the immature cells. And when nidoblasts, they become mature, then it is called nidocytes. And the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi apparatus of nidocytes, that changes to nematocysts or the stinging capsules. And because of the presence of these nematocysts or the stinging cells, the phylum has got its name, that is the phylum nidaria. So, nematocysts are present on the tentacles and the body. But it is abundantly pre present on the tentacles. These nidoblasts that are uh, nematocysts actually uh, that is used for anchorage, defense and capturing. Okay. So, moving ahead. This is the uninverted form of nematocyst and this is the everted form of nematocyst. When this nidocyl Okay, when this nidocell it gets disturbed, then this thread that this nematocyst that comes out, and along with this, and along with this poison comes out, which helps in escaping the predator and also for catching the prey. Then we will be discussing about habit and habitat, body symmetry, level of organization, and the germ layers. So, beginning with habit and habitat. All Nidarians are aquatic in nature. They are mostly marine, but there are some few freshwater forms as well. Talking about the body symmetry, they are radially symmetrical animals. Here I am showing the, it is a member of phylum Nidaria. And here you can see the body, it is divided into e equal halves by various vertical sections. Various vertical sections are dividing the body into equal halves. Then, moving ahead, level of organization. Nidarians, they exhibit tissue level of organization. And connective tissue is absent in them. Then, the most important point. Nidarians, they are diploblastic animals. Diploblastic, that means they have two germ layers. Ectoderm and endoderm. Separated by mesoglia. Okay, then moving ahead. See, here I am showing the enlarged view. Enlarged view of body wall of Hydra. This is endoderm. This is ectoderm. Okay. I told that Nidarians, they are diploblastic animals and they have two germ layers, ectoderm and endoderm. And it is separated by mesoglia. Mesoglia, which is very gelatinous and that gives the jelly-like appearance. Then, moving ahead, See how beautiful it is. It is, this is jellyfish and here in the center it has oral arms and at the periphery it has got tentacles. And it is able to move in such a way because of the gelatinous matrix that is present. And this belongs to the class Kyphozoa of the phylum Nidaria. Moving ahead, metagenesis. Metagenesis, it is a very important characteristic of phylum Nidaria. Actually, there are two individuals. The first one is polyp and the another one is medusa. There are basically two individuals. The first one is polyp which is attached to the substratum and the another one is medusa which is the free swimming form. Then the alternation of generation, alterna alternation of generation from polyp to medusa and from medusa to polyp. That is called metagenesis. 
So both these forms, polyp and medusa, both are diploid in nature. So polyps, they reproduce. Polyps reproduce asexually to produce medusa. And medusa, they reproduce sexually to produce polyp. Then moving ahead, there is another very important characteristic of phylum Nidaria that is polymorphism. Polymorphism, it is the phenomena of division of labor in which different functions are assigned to different individuals of the colony. And members of the colony, they are called zooids. So we have gastrozoids, gonozoids and ductilozoids. Gastrozoids, their function is nutrition. Gonozoids, their function is reproduction. And the ductilozoids, their function is protective in nature. So, uh, understand it, that it is the phenomena of division of work. Okay, division of work in which different functions like nutrition, reproduction and defense that are assigned to different individuals of the colony and that is called polymorphism. Do not confuse it with metagenesis. Metagenesis, that is the alternation of generation from polyp to medusa and from medusa to polyp. But polymorphism within the polyp, there are multiple zooids whose function is nutrition, reproduction and defense and within medusa there will be multiple zooids whose functions are assigned to different individuals of the colony and that are called zooids so gastrozoids, gonozoids and ductilozoids. I hope you are clear with this point then moving ahead gaseous exchange gaseous exchange there are no specialized respiratory structures so it occurs by diffusion through general body surface talking about excretion excretion that specialized excretory structures are absent so it also occurs by diffusion through general body surface so gaseous exchange and excretion both occurs by diffusion through general body surface then excretory product is mainly ammonia so nidarians they are ammonotelic in nature Talking about the circulation and digestive system. Body cavity, it is called cilentron and it is also called gastrovascular cavity. Gastrovascular cavity with single opening that is mouth. So they have only one opening, single opening that is mouth. They don't have anus in them. And mouth is situated on a conical projection that is called hypostome. So it helps in digestion as well as distribution of food. Moving ahead, nervous system. It consists of it consists of network of nerve cells and their processes. Then reproductive system, they are mostly hermaphrodite in nature. And I already mentioned that reproduction, it is usually asexual in polyform and sexual in medusa form. Then fertilization. What is fertilization? Fusion of gametes. So fusion of gametes that may be internal or external. Then development is indirect. Development is indirect. What does that mean? That larval stages are present. Like planula lava, hydrula lava, cyphistoma, and ephyra. So here I am showing that these are the free swimming male and female medusae. What they will produce? They will produce sperm and egg that will fertilize to form planula lava. Planula lava, then it will grow to form cyphistoma that remains attached to the substratum. Then it will form strobula, and these are the buds actually. And when these birds that will separate out to form ephyra. Then ephyra that will grow into an adult. Okay, then moving ahead. Phylum Nidaria has got three classes. Class Hydrozoa, Skyphozoa and Anthozoa. So phylum Nidaria has got three classes, class Hydrozoa, Skyphozoa and Anthozoa. Moving ahead, class Hydrozoa. They are mainly freshwater.
water or marine they may be solitary or colonial and polyp stays that last longer examples are opelia and physalia 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 it is a colonial hydroid and it is also called portuguese man of war why it is called portuguese man of war i want to so hear the animation can you see how beautiful it is actually it is physalia it is also called portuguese man of war because when it floats in the sea then it looks like 18th century portuguese ship sailing at its full sail so this is physalia also called portuguese man of war moving ahead class skyphozoa skyphozoa their members are exclusively marine they are solitary in nature and their medusa stays that is dominant polyps they are actually reduced or they are either completely absent so their mesoglea i earlier i mentioned that they are diploblastic animals and they have two germ layers that is ectoderm and endoderm which is separated by mesoglea which is very gelatinous and due to that uh, gelatinous mesoglea it has got jelly like appearance so they are called jellyfishes aurelia commonly known as moon jelly it also belongs to this class uh, skyphozoa of phylum nidaria then moving ahead class anthozoa their members are exclusively marine they are either solitary or colonial and there are only polyp stages no medusa stages are there no medusa only polyps are there and their mesoglea that is stout and cellular examples are tubiopora and metridium so here i am showing this is metridium metridium it is also known as sea anemone and body is short here you can read body is short cylindrical and radially symmetrical divisible into three distinct region that is pedal disc column and oral disc so this is pedal disc this is column and this is oral disc this is all about class anthozoa and moving ahead i want to show some of the examples of class anthozoa the first one is tubipora that is the organ pipe coral this is tubipora this is organ pipe coral meandrina is the, it is the brain coral and this is the corollium that is the red coral and the very distinguishing feature of class anthozoan members that over the time they uh, they take calcium carbonate strontium sulfate and silica from the sea and the ocean and they deposit into their body and inside the body and when they die they leave behind the calcareous spicules on which the other polyform that grow and eventually with time coral reef is formed so this is the coral reef very a uh, very important part of aquatic ecosystem and you can see the very vibrant colors and that is due to the presence of symbiotic algae in them and due to the marine pollution and the climate change these symbiotic algae that get ejected out and that is called coral bleaching so with this i conclude thank you so much mm -hmm.